Hey guys, in this particular video we'll be solving a fairly challenging rectilinear motion problem. And here's the problem. Let's say that we've got this car which zooms by this biker at a constant speed of 120 kilometers per hour. Let's say it takes two seconds for the guy to hop on his bike and then he tries to catch up to the car. Let's say at first he accelerates at six meters per second squared, right, until he tops off at a maximum speed of 150 kilometers per hour and then tries to continue to catch up to the car. And my question to you is, what is the distance the biker has to travel in order to meet up with the car? Okay. Now there are two main ways you can probably approach this problem. The first way is probably a little bit more obvious, so I'll start off with that way and we'll discuss where to go from there. Let's first start by drawing a time position graph which shows both the motion of the bike and of the car simultaneously. Well, let's draw the motion of the car in blue. We know that it starts off at, say, time t is equal to zero. That's when we're starting our experiment. And because it's traveling at a constant speed, the relationship between displacement and time will be linear. Right? Now, the biker's motion is a little bit more complicated. First of all, it takes him two seconds to hop on the bike, so he starts off just here. Then he accelerates at 6 meters per second squared. That means that his motion, in terms of the position time graph, will be parabolic. I won't prove it in this particular video, but it is, it is essentially parabolic, if, he, if it's a constant acceleration. Then, once he tops off at a, con uh, once he tops off at a speed of 150 kilometers per hour, then he travels constant at that speed. So it's going to look something like this. That's going to be the equations, or this is what our time position curve will actually look like. That's one particular case. This is one case, or case one if you like. Another case is if the biker actually meets up with the car while he's accelerating. So let me draw the second case just here. Here's the car once again, unchanged. But the biker, for all we know, could actually catch up to the car while he's accelerating. Basically the parabola could intersect with the curve before the biker reaches his max speed of 150 kilometers per hour. So basically that's case two just there. So this is case two and that's case one. We don't know which case is true. So if we wanted to do this the hardcore way, what we could do is we could literally just solve for the equations of motion and plug in to see where these curves intersect. Right? It's completely up to us. We could do it this way if we wanted. Now, in this particular video, now that we understand this problem, I'm going to actually do it a slightly smarter, but maybe a little bit less intuitive way. Let's, instead of plotting displacement versus time, let's plot velocity versus time. Let's plot velocity versus time. This may be a little bit challenging to imagine, but bear with me, I think you'll understand it. If we want to plot the velocity of the car with respect to time, what will it look like? Well, from t is equal to zero all the way onwards, potentially indefinitely if the car keeps going, the car will have a constant speed of 120 kilometers per hour, right? That's the car. But the biker's motion will be a little bit more complicated. Remember, he starts two seconds late and then travels at a constant acceleration. So basically, the relationship between velocity and time will be linear. And it will look like this. It will look like that right? And eventually tops off at a max speed of 150 kilometers per hour, which is larger than 120. That's why it goes above this line. And then travels at a constant speed of 150 kilometers per hour. So let me draw that. That's going to be 150 kilometers per hour. 150 kilometers per hour. And don't forget, this is a velocity time curve, right? And eventually, these two cars could meet, right? And in fact, if they actually meet after the car finishes accelerating, after the bike finishes accelerating, sorry, then you'll find out that this point, some arbitrary time t2, is when they're going to intersect. Basically, when the bike and the car meet each other. So let me draw that. Let me extend this axis just a little bit. Don't want to confuse you. That's t, and t2 is when the bike and car finally meet up. Basically, the biker meets up with the car. Okay, now in order to do this problem, I'm actually going to use only one formula, and it's remarkably simple. It's going to be the formula acceleration is going to be equal to dv dt. And I'm also going to be, I, I lied, I'm going to be using two formulas. I'm going to be using two formulas, and the other one is going to be v is equal to dx dt. Those are the two formulas we need to use. 
And the one we're going to use first is this one. We're going to rearrange it to get in a more familiar um, format. If we integrate times by dt and integrate, we're left with, first of all, v dt is going to be equal to dx. But you could rearrange that further and integrate both sides to get this. Now, what does that look like? What does that even mean? Well, essentially, the integral of dx is just going to be x. Basically, that's the distance you've traveled, right? And let's leave the left-hand side just how it is, the integral of v dt. That's the area, that's the area under, under the velocity time curve. Let me scroll down so you can see. Area under velocity time curve right I hope that makes sense that's the area under your velocity time curve um, and that's really important because we can actually equate these two things now we know the area under the velocity time curve is equal to the distance we've traveled it's not really the distance we've traveled but the distance they've traveled right so one of the beautiful things we can do to find out where the where the car meets the biker is we could actually literally find the area under this blue curve so let me get this straight the area under this blue curve indicates the distance the car has traveled in a time t2 likewise the area under this green curve just here indicates the distance traveled by the biker in a time t2 so this is area and this is area and they both refer to the distance they've traveled in a time t2 right now in order to find out when they actually meet each other all we have to do is set the blue area equal to the green area and that's essentially saying the time at which and, and we're solving for the distance at which they are they've traveled the same so basically the we're solving for the same distance they've traveled. So basically when they've met up with each other. I hope that makes sense. Okay, now that we've sorted the intuition out in a few mathematical equations, let's actually get to solving this problem. Okay, in order to do this, let's actually solve for the area under the blue curve. Let's solve for the blue area just here. Let's solve for this area. What's that going to be equal to? Well, we know because, in fact, let me just quickly redraw it. It looks a little bit like this just here and we stop at an arbitrary time t2 when they supposedly meet right here and this is hundred and twenty kilometers per hour right okay now let's solve for this what's the area under this curve well that's easy that's just a simple rectangle we know that that's just gonna be hundred and twenty kilometers per hour times by whatever the base is which is t2 right base times height which is gonna be 120 times by a thousand divided by 60 squared because there's a thousand meters in a kilometer and 60 squared seconds in a 60 squared seconds in an hour and we're going to times that by our time t2 which is going to be equal to 33.33 recurring um, t2 right so that's going to be the area under this that is that is that just there right that's the distance the car has traveled in a time t2 now comes the hard bit this is where we have to calculate the area under this green part just here. So let me actually quickly redraw that so I don't have to keep stro scrolling up. This is the area under the green curve just here in a time t2. t2. This is v and this is the area. In order to do this, we need to split this into both a triangle and a rectangle. But there's a problem. We know this value, that's easy enough, that's just two seconds. But we don't know this value. What is, what is that value? We need to find it in order to solve for the area under this triangle. So let's do that. We know one really important fact. We know that the bike, the acceleration of the bike, is going to be equal to 6 meters per second squared right and we can use acceleration is equal to dv dt to solve this particular problem we can integrate and we're left with your velocity of your bike your velocity of your bike while it's accelerating i should say is going to be equal to 6t plus some constant that's once you integrate right and the c is your integrational constant just here
we can use boundary conditions to solve for the constant. And what's that going to be? Well, we know the velocity of the bike is going to be equal to zero. Basically, it starts from rest when your time is equal to two seconds. That's when the guy hops on the bike and he starts accelerating. That's at this point just here. Right, so we can plug this value in to solve for our, be uh, to solve for our integrational constant. And that's going to be 0 is going to be equal to 6 times 2 plus c. Right, And when you solve for that, that just means c is going to be equal to minus 12. I hope that makes sense. Right, So let's, let's write down our new equation. We know that the velocity of our bike is going to be equal to 6t minus 12. That's really important. Right Now we need to solve for the time at which the bike reaches its max speed. So basically solve for, solve for V bike is equal to 150 kilometers per hour. Right? Well, we can do that. We know that's just going to be 150 times by 1,000 divided by 60 squared, right? Plus 12, plus 12 divided by 6 is going to be equal to the time it takes, I'll just call it T1, the time it takes in order for the bike to reach its max speed, right? That's just rearranging the formula I had above. That's rearranging this formula I had above. All right, well, let's solve that. We know that that's just going to be, bear with me, it's going to be 150 times 1,000 divided by 60 squared plus 12 divided by 6, which is going to be 8... 8.944 seconds. That is T1 just here. That is, that is, if you like, the length of this just here, which is 8.9445, right? Okay, we are ready to start solving for the area under the green curve. So let's do that. I'm going to move just slightly to the right. Hopefully I don't lose anything. Hopefully I don't lose you. And what we're doing is solving for this the, the, the triangle first. So the area is going to be equal to, what is it? It's going to be a half times base. What's the base? It's going to be T1 minus 2, which is going to be 8.9445 minus 2 times by your height. In fact, let me move over a little bit more. Times by your height, which is actually going to be, remember, 150 kilometers per hour. I'll just write it as 150 times by 1,000 divided by 60 squared. I'll simplify this in a second. That's the triangle sorted. That is actually, let me find a good color to use, one I haven't used before. That is this part just here. That is this part just here. That's the triangle sorted. Let's work on the rectangle now. Well, what's the rectangle? That's just going to be the, the base of this rectangle, which is this distance from here to here. What's that? That's going to be T2 minus T1, which is going to be T2 minus 8.9445. I feel like I need to make even more space. In fact, let me write it below. Let me write it below. I don't want to lose you. Plus your base, which is T2 minus T1, which is 8.9445 times by your height, which is 150 times by 1,000 divided by 60 squared. Now, fortunately, I've done this question before, so I can fi I just pretend I've already just plugged this into my calculator, and that is actually going to simplify down to 41.67t2 minus 228. That's what it simplifies down to. Now, remember, we're solving for when the blue area is equal to the green area. Basically, when the distance traveled by the bike equals to the distance traveled by the car. right? And when you solve for that, you're going to be left with 33.33t. That's the um, area under our blue curve. I hope I did that right. Let me zoom up. That's the area under our blue curve. Yep. Times by t2, I should say. t2 is going to be equal to what we have here, which is going to be 41.67t2 minus 228. Brilliant. We can solve this. I'll plug it into my calculator, and we get the answer t2. I'll draw it in white. t2 is going to be equal to 27.34 seconds. Right? But that's not the answer. We were asked to find the distance, not the time at which they meet. Right? So what we need to do is we need to plug this T2 value back into any one of our areas, and we get, if we plug in 33.33 T2, we get 
uh, 912 meters. That is the distance at which the bike meets the car. That is the answer to this particular problem. Now, before I end this video, I want to talk about the value of our t value just here. Notice we get 27.34 seconds, right? Basically, we found that this value right here, this value is equal to 27.34 seconds. What would it mean if t2 was less than t1? Basically, what would it mean, remember, t1 was this value just here, which was... I think 8.9 seconds. What would it mean if T2 if T2 was less than 8.95 seconds? That would mean that the bike met up with the car while it was accelerating, which would mean that you could no longer apply this formula, meaning that you would have to recalculate the areas. So watch out for these values. I mean, whilst it's simple in the fact that we only use two formulas, you really have to think ahead and, and realize how you're applying these formulas and how they bend and stretch when you need them to. Okay, guys, that's a very challenging rectilinear motion problem, but I really hope you understand it.